we created a whole new look for this bookcase wall using the new IOD paint inlay, grisaille, and a hollow core door. Behind that wall right there, it's kind of a grim reminder of one of the darker days in my marriage. We don't argue that often. That day we had a pretty good blowout. You remember eight to 900 pounds worth of ironstone stacked on those shelves, a horrible, just clutter. I don't think there was eight or 900 pounds. That's ridiculous. It was an excess amount of ironstone on display on those shelves. According to you. According to me. Since that dark day, I have edited our bookcases and came up with a whole new idea for this bookcase wall. Are we gonna get in another fight? Maybe. Because you don't like what I'm saying. You wanted the truth, that's the truth. <laughs> I grabbed every box I could find, laundry baskets, cleared off all of those shelves. I took every bit of that iron stone and swore I was gonna sell it. My new bright idea was to grab a couple of hollow core doors and head over to JR's workshop. We started by searching through the barn to find just the right old trim pieces. Coincidentally, JR has quite a stash of stuff in his barn. I guess we're glad we don't have to look at his collections when we're sitting at home at night. After trimming out the doors with found pieces, I primed the whole thing with some white paint. You want to get in another fight? No, that's like, that's like <laughs> a no, half a ton. Not quite a half a ton, but there was, iron stones heavy, you know that. I grabbed every box I could find, laundry baskets, and I cleared off all of those shelves. I took every bit of that iron stone and swore I was gonna sell it. I left the shelves empty for a few weeks. So in the end, it did force me to kind of edit what was happening on those shelves. So this is the new product by IOD. It's called a paint inlay. There are paint pigments that are embedded into one side of the carrier paper. I referred to the diagram on the back of the inlay package to start to lay out my inlay on the door. Here's a spoiler alert. The diagram on the back of the package is actually in reverse. So you're gonna have to fuss and fiddle a little bit to arrange your pieces the way that you need to to get them all to fit together. Once you have a correct layout, go ahead and number the pages in the order that you're going to place them on your piece. And then trim away the excess edges back to the start of the pattern. Well, I was upset that day, I know that. But you made some changes because of that. And vice versa, I've made some changes because of what changes did you make as a result of that argument? 
I didn't have to argue about it anymore. The paint inlays are really unique. They actually work by transferring the pigments into wet paint. So I work a section at a time and base coat my door with a white chalk paint. And while the paint is wet, I apply the inlay sheet pigment side down, press it into place, Then use the IOD brayer over the entire surface to press out any wrinkles or bubbles. I like to take a bit of plastic wrap as well to wipe over the surface to really make sure that I have good adhesion. And then to start to activate those pigments, dampen the surface with a mister bottle or with a sponge. I worked my way down the panel door, just a section at a time, apply a coat of wet chalk paint, press the inlay pigment side down into the paint. Here I'm reapplying paint where I missed a small section, and then I'll press the inlay down into the wet paint. You'll definitely need to fuss a little bit with this particular transfer to get all the pieces to fit together, but I'll show you later my trick for making it all look flawless. I followed the same steps as I worked my way down my project. Then let the entire project dry completely undisturbed. After several hours when the paint and inlay is completely dry, you'll need to dampen the surface with a mister bottle or with a damp cloth. Then slowly and gently peel back the carrier paper. All of those pigments are embedded in the dry paint. You can see the beautiful texture and stroke work of the chalk paint. The inlay has a wonderful rustic plaster look to it. Using some matching chalk paint colors, I painted in areas that didn't receive the inlay quite as well because of the texture of the paint. Now it's time to put the panels in place, covering up those very messy bookcases. I have nothing more to it'll say. Be, it'll be a very quiet day then, won't it? <laughs> what I do is, um, in my little Mr. Mr. Bottle, I have half water and half Fusion Tough Coat in a matte finish. I just spray over the entire surface. Then 
that is going to be enough to set the paint pigments. If they get too wet, the pigments will reactivate and you'll get some smudging and you don't want that. So this is what I've learned. First step, whether you put a clear finish on it or uh, whether you wax it, a clear poly or wax, you want to spray it with half water, half clear poly to set those pigments in place. Let that dry completely and then go ahead and add your final coat or wax as you desire. There it is. We are so happy with the end result. I love how I can use those panels to either cover up the bookcases or remove them and use them in another part of the cottage. And isn't it ironic that in the end, I ended up covering them up anyway. Find all of the products that I use at ellenjgoods.com or at our brick and mortar store in Medina, New York. And don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment so that you can see more of what we create at Ellen J. Goods.